This is Rod Kusin and Spoo Man for Risk. It is August 29th, 2014, and we're going to review some trading principles that we use regularly each day for making our trading decisions. The first step that we take is based on the chart that you see in front of you. It is a composite market profile. And from this, we're going to ascertain areas of support and resistance. The second step that we take is to determine the trend. The third step we take is to find what we refer to as the contrarian. The fourth step we take is to isolate the setup, the trade setup, using the premium and the ticky for determining the exact point of entry. So those four steps. Now we also will be using, in the course of our discussion, similar principles by way of examining the Dow. The Dow is very important and can be extremely useful in isolating trading opportunities. Let's now go back and look at the composite market profile. Now a composite profile is made up of areas of high and low volume. Obviously this vertical histogram will show you very clearly where there's areas of high volume and areas of low volume such as in, in here or in here or right there this would be another area of low volume in here, another area of low volume in there, and so on. So you've got peaks and valleys all along, all along the way. When the market is selling off, when we're in a downtrend, when we're looking to sell, what we will generally find take place is that the market will move past an area of high volume such as in here, and seek out an area of low volume, such as down in here. This is where we would expect the market to gravitate to at least before it begins to find support. It will generally find support somewhere prior to the next peak. And if it exceeds that peak, it will find support at an, at an area of higher uh, volume activity before it gets to the lowest area down in here. But we haven't really had much of that going on over the past uh, month. In fact, even if we expand this chart to the right so that you've got a little bit more resolution here, you still don't see much. All right. So moving down into this area of low volume here, if it was to exceed this, it would probably stop somewhere right in here before it gets to that area of higher volume. If it exceeds that, then it'll seek out some area where the market has spent a, a, you know, a, some period of time. Um, that will usually be the area of, of support. In this particular instance, you don't really see anything until right here. The market spent a little bit more, more time at 83 and a half. And if not there, at around 80, 82 and 3 quarters. And then if it was to go much beyond that, it's going to fill in that gap at 79 or at 80 and move in the direction of the high volume area. The uh, green line here representing the upper value area over the course of the last three months. Point of control being down to 67 and a quarter. But this should give you a brief idea as to how we look at the market. 
Now, if the market was moving up from an area of support, it's going to find resistance after it passes the areas of low volume and moves up to the high area of volume. It's going to re it's going to have a little bit of resistance there, but it will generally exceed that and then stop right at an area where it spent a good deal of time as indicated by a flat area in here which is just at about 2,000. Right in there at around 2,000, 2,000 and a quarter. And if it gets much beyond that, you know, who's very difficult to say just where it's going to stop. Now this is not the only thing that we use for determining our calculations, but this is the principle. So today, definitely somewhere down in this area here, and if not there, it'll probably exceed this point in here and move down. Might get some support in here, but this all depends upon the big picture. The big picture, which also must include the Dow. So let's take a look at the same kind of a profile on the Dow. Now you see this is also being taken from around uh, the 1st of July of this year, this profile. So all this volume is since the first part of July. We see areas where it's a little easier to, to identify uh, support or resistance because of the troughs and the peaks on this vertical histogram. So take a look here. Let's supposing we're selling off and we're above the point of control. So if we're selling off, we're going to sell off and it will generally gravitate toward the point of control. So you can pretty well rest assured that if you're having a short, holding it until the Dow hits the point of control is pretty much of a given. But as we say, it will usually go beyond that and begin to try to fill in areas of lower volume. So the first place that we would expect to find some level of support is going to be right down in this neighborhood here at 17039. If it goes much below this, all right, 17034.5, and then drop down further and find support right at about 1718. Okay, that's what we would expect. If we are moving up from an area of support, we're going to find resistance as it goes past the area where we have our highest volume, which in this case is the point of control and fill in the area of lower volume, such as right in here. And we're looking at this area right in here. And it'll move past that, and it might stall right at around 81. If it goes much beyond that, which likely it would, because well, it really wants to fill in more of a trough. So the next time, yeah, it's, it's going to fill in this area right there, this little trough right in there at around 90 and then maybe stop right there at around 94. If it goes much beyond that, she'll probably stop either there at 1700 or right in here at 17109. Those are the areas where you're liable to see some kind of resistance taking place. So. That's step number one, identify where these prices are. And we use this volume profile as an excellent way to figure this out. Step number two now is to determine the trend. Now, we're not going to go into this because there's several different ways that we do it. Uh, 
but the determination isn't it doesn't take more than just a couple of seconds just to see what the trend is. Once we've identified the trend, the, the, the issue that we face now is to identify the contrarian, and that's what we want to talk about. So we're going to go right to our charts now. We're going to go here to the ES chart, and this is based upon a five second chart. You're going to see why we use this very fast chart because it really it, it enables us to have excellent fills while at the same time eliminating much of a drawdown. This chart is composed of a five second chart with a moving profile that includes both an upper and a lower value area, the green lines, the point of control, the yellow line, and a standard deviation line above and below. The next part of the chart right in here is the premium, followed by the ticking here. We have several indicators that are running, uh, that are plotting what is taking place first of all here on the ES, then we have the premium here, the ticky here, another premium graph here, and another premium graph here. These are using slightly different settings on the premium and the ticky. But in particular, in particular, the next three indicators are helping us to see areas of overbought and oversold conditions. Now, these are generated off of the ES, but we use a very special setting for determining overbought and oversold conditions. We won't go into that. All we want you to, to see from this is where we're overbought or where we're oversold. When this first chart hits 100, which is symbolized here in the red. That's what we would consider to be an overbought condition. So anytime this hits red, it's overbought. And if this hits red, it's very overbought. This is a slower chart, to say the least. Green represents oversold. But we're not interested in, in when it's oversold because at the moment we're short. And so we want to find an overbought condition, a contrarian in other words, to identify opportunities to take a short trade. And there will be many. Now it is not the purpose of our discussion today to talk about where we're going to get out. We're just going to look at where we're going to get in. So. Anytime this hits 100, or anytime this hits 100, it will tell us that we are in an overbought condition. The last chart, or the last indicator here, will also tell us that, but we're also going to use this, this particular chart to identify potentially areas where we need to exercise caution. That the market could be changing direction. This particular type of indicator is one of the best that we have ever used for determining divergence. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Now in addition to what we see on the screen here, we also pay attention to the Dow. We're watching the Dow. Every time we take a trade, we want to see what's happening to the Dow. Because, after all, we put a great deal of stock in the ticky, and the ticky is nothing more than a reflection of what's happening on the Dow. But we want to see the context of the ticky by actually looking at where the Dow is. So let's look at our first opportunity. Now, we said at the beginning that we were looking for short trades. So the first time that we're in an over bought condition is right at the open. Our indicators right in here are red. 
So there is the first opportunity we have to look at a short trade. Let's expand out this chart so you can see this more, more clearly. We'll give this a little bit more resolution. All right. So keep in mind, it's a five second chart. So here we're in an overbought condition. Now, where exactly are we going to look to take a trade? Several parts, uh, several questions have to be addressed when we're looking at taking a trade. And a lot of this depends upon the slope of the premium and the ticky. Now, the slope of the premium and the ticky is the key. And to determine that slope, we have to look at the right part of the bar. When we're looking to take a short trade, we are only paying attention to the highs of the premium and the ticky. What we will look for in taking a short trade is a higher high on the spoos, but a lower high on the highs of the premium and the ticky. Now we have specialized indicators that will tell us that. But the best way to do this is to look at the raw data itself and to learn how to read it. That's what we teach in our course. Now we're going to give you a brief piece of insight. Look at these highs we had just over a very, very brief period of time, the market began to move up. Look at where the ticky is, okay? Look at the highs of the ticky. Higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, lower highs, okay? There's your pivot, it's right there. Now you're getting into lower highs. So at this point in time, if you've got a higher high on the spoon, the spoos or equal highs, higher high or equal highs, and you've got lower highs on the ticky, that's a pretty good indication that's where it's going to pivot. Same is true of the premium. And, and by the way, we put greater stock into the premium than we do the ticky, but it was the ticky here that was really obvious. A little harder to see here. Now we hit higher highs on the or equal highs on the spoos, we've got much lower highs on both the premium and the ticky. And in particular, all right, the premium is dropping below what we refer to as our threshold line. The threshold here at negative 1.45, fair value is at negative 2.2, and we've got an, a lower threshold line here at negative 2.48. Generally speaking, these numbers will not change during the day. All that having been said, here you have a divergence. Lower highs on both the premium and the ticky, equal highs here, and a confirmed overbought condition as seen here. We would not take a trade right at the point in time that it becomes overbought. We have to come here and look at what's happening with the premium and the ticky. And since the highs of the ticky were continuing to go up, there was no divergence here until right there. We would not look at taking a short trade until that particular moment. And we would pull that trade at a higher high or equal high. So if you pull that trade within that particular instance here in a five second chart using a market entry, you don't have much more than one to two ticks at best off of your best 
possible fill. Okay? Now, until you learn how to read the premium in the ticket, we have specialized indicators here that will show you when that time occurs. Right in here, this is the premium, this is the ticky. Here it is again using a much slower chart. So the first thing that we need to be sure of is that these bars, if we're taking a short trade, are yellow. Now the premium here, all right, has been yellow pretty much from the get-go. But you need to keep in mind that in the first couple of minutes after the market opens, the premium will not be accurate. Why? Because the premium is a reflection of the difference between the S&P 500 cash and the S&P 500 futures. Well, anyone who's studied the market for any length of time knows that those 500 stocks are not going to open all at the same time. So your premium is not going to be accurate during the first couple of minutes, typically speaking. And one way that we can have a fairly good idea that the premium is now accurate is once it moves close to, if not exceeding, the fair value line. Once it's hit fair value, that's pretty much our, our indicator that the premium is uh, uh, is, is fairly accurate and most of those stocks, if not all, have already opened. Now we don't always do it that way, but in this case that that's a pretty good indication that all of your stocks are open. So you just moved into the fair value right on this bar here and then in, into here. So getting a trade at that particular time would make good sense. Now. That having been said, let's move on. We're overbought, and all we need is one of these indicators to tell us that we don't need confirmation. We can't stress that enough. So many people want all sorts of confirmation before they enter a trade. Actually, it's better to have less confirmation and, and look at the right thing than it is to have all sorts of confirmation with all sorts of indicators. It just doesn't work that way. So your first trading opportunity to short the market is right in here. Your second opportunity is going to be right in here, okay? Because this is hit 100. Now, we want to take a moment and mention that this bar on the premium is extremely high in contrast to the rest. It's very obvious. All stocks have opened. And the premium shoots up at 842 and hits a new high. Now that particular bar on the premium is so high it is predictive. It's well above our threshold level. But it's predictive of what may happen later on during the day. We teach you how to read the premium in our course. And all of our students knew that that bar was predictive. The market, regardless of what it does, what, uh, what it does right after this, should at some point in time today return to at least 1999 or better. That's what that bar on the premium told you at eight. 42 this morning, Central Standard Times. Now, that aside, we were overbought, at least for this particular moment. This is a downtrend. So we're going to see the market continue to drop, but we're likely, pardon me, we're likely going to see that the market will change trend and rally back up because of that bar in the premium. That's pretty cool. So we're taking a short trade in here, and for various reasons also, not only are you over bought right now, but we have at least for the moment moved up to the upper value area. 
as represented by this green line. Shot right up to that price. Now if it's going to be moving down, very likely it's going to be moving down toward the, the magenta line here, which represents a one standard deviation below the existing lower value area. It's almost one standard deviation. But again, our purpose is not to discuss the exit. We're only looking at the entries. Now the next obvious place where there is an over bought condition is right in here. So let's bring up where the spoos are at that particular moment. Now as the market moves down in to this area, the next option is right in here. Because this shows we're at 100 and we're somewhat sandwiched in between the upper value area, or pardon me, the lower value area here, and our one standard deviation mark. So if we were going to take a short trade right in here, the first thing that we want to verify is that number one, we're overbought, but the highs of the premium need to be divergent. And in particular, they need to be at or below the upper threshold line. So if you just look at where we're at here, the highs of the premium are above the threshold line. They're above the threshold line here. They're above the threshold line here. But right here, the highs of the premium are below the threshold line. We haven't gotten any higher, but this is generally where we're going to see the drop. Similarly, if you look at the ticky, the ticky hits a high here. Now that green line is significant. We have a specialized indicator that tells us what the reading is of the premium based upon the color. So a green bar represents 16 on the ticky, a white bar, 18, and so on. So the ticky hit a 16 here, and now we hit a new high on the premium, but below, but it's above the threshold line. And here we get another new high, about equal high on the premium, and then here where we're getting just above the, uh, the uh, uh, threshold line, Tiki has not gone any higher. So the Tiki is not predicting anything beyond where we are right then. And now right as we hit that final equal high right there, look at the slope of the Tiki. So the Tiki has now dropped and the high is already below zero at this moment this is coming down. And you know it, the ticky is at a negative two. Okay, down she comes. Doesn't continue down, however. Now, she rallies back up to the next area where we have a um, over, overbought condition right in here. But we want you to pay close attention to, all, to what is also happening to this indicator down here. This indicator tells us that we have been oversold right here at the bottom. And as we moved into a higher low, look at what's happened to this indicator. The slope of this indicator is up. And that's a caution for us. That's an, that's an area of caution. We don't require, we don't require that the slope of this indicator be negative. But if we're getting equal lows or lower lows, and that slope is increasing, we have a divergence, and it's a pretty good indication that the market is going to move a little bit higher. 
before it begins to drop. So it's just an area of caution. Now keeping in mind we're looking for opportunities to take a short trade. So your next area is going to be right here or right in here. That is what we refer to as your setup. Your setup. Once we've hit 100, we have a setup, but we don't necessarily pull the trade until we see the confirmation on the premium and the ticking. So let's see how this works. All right, we've hit 100 right here, and we're going to look at where the ticking and the premium is. Now, if you look at our graph here on the premium, see the upslope, the cyan colored bars? The bet, one of the best times to take a short trade is when the histogram is above zero and the slope is negative. Occasionally, if we are at a higher high and we are we are already below the zero line and the slope is negative. That's a beautiful time to take a short trade. It doesn't always happen that way. But we get into an overbought condition based on our indicator here, but we have not got confirmation. Not yet, at least, on the premium. And furthermore, when you see this lower value area dropping. Some of the best times to take a short trade is when the highs of the market move into or just slightly above the declining lower value area. This is lower air, this is your resistance line for lack of a better word. So let's examine our principles here and see why they work so well. As we moved into this area here, the highs of the premium were just slightly above our uh, threshold line. Okay, But we still had a positive slope here. And then we move up a little bit higher here. We're now right at the price of the lower value area, but we've got a higher bar on the premium at this time. So generally speaking, we're not going to exercise a trade at that moment. We've got to, we've got to see the highs of the premium at or below the threshold line and the slope is negative. So Right in here, you've still got a, a, a positive slope on the premium. Now you've got a negative slope. And if you just waited just a moment just to, to confirm, you're one tick above where you were before. And now the slope is down on the premium, on the uh, Premium is below the threshold line. The slope of the ticky is negative right there. And that corresponds with this high and the following drop. And all you need to do is just wait until we get confirmation that we are in an overbought condition and then start paying very, very, very close attention to the premium and the ticking and look for that opportunity. It works so well. All right, let's look at the next opportunity. All right, we have a confirmation of an overbought condition here on this slightly slower indicator, but we've already exercised a short trade in here. This is just confirming we're coming down. But we, we move up again right here. We're overbought. And over here, we're overbought. So as soon as we hit that, we're looking at where we're at 
where are we at on the premium and the ticket? So we're just beginning to drop below our threshold line here. It's, it's just slightly above it. But we're also at a higher high on the ticky. And we don't get the we don't really get a divergence until we've dropped. I don't like to trade that. I want a, a higher high or an equal high and a divergence on the premium as well as on the ticky. Because if we take that trade right in here, all right. We're not at a higher high anymore. We're at a lower high. And that's enough. Depending on where you place your stop, you could get stopped right out. Look for the divergence. So where do you see that? Okay. We come right back up here, and we have equal highs. Lower highs on the spoons. Lower highs on the ticky. Okay. That's where you want to short this thing. Ticks up just once above that, one tick above before she drops. Now, you might also notice that in this indicator right in here, we are not overbought. We're not red. Not now. But we are at a lower high. So depending on how you want to read that, you could look at these equal highs as being divergent on this indicator. It's not going to make that much difference. But you don't get overbought truly until we hit 100 one more time, which just barely happens right in there. And then down she goes. All right. So I think you've got a good idea as to how we're analyzing this market. Now, way over here, we hit a low of 94 and a quarter. Remember, we were looking at that area on the histogram, on the uh, vertical histogram, composite profile, 92-ish is really more of the likely target before we're going to even begin to worry about this market turning. But we also must keep in mind that very high bar that took place on the premium way over here at 842. So let's continue on. Another area to short right in here. Let's move forward. The next time you're overbought is right in here. And then again here, okay, right in there, or right in here. It's so easy to see. But let's now analyze what else we see. We have our indicators on the premium set here to show us where the premium is going lower. Anytime this little yellow dot appears, we've got a lower low on the premium. Even if it's by one one hundredth of a point, it's a lower low. And we get a much lower low here. At this particular moment, the spoons have dropped to, oh look, 92 and a quarter. Okay, that's right where that trough was. Right where that trough was. Okay. That's right there. It's not a random walk, folks. That's the way the market works. However, we've got a lower low on the premium here. When we get a lower low on the premium, and this is on a five-second chart, I, I am banking on this market is going to come back to 92 and a quarter or less. So any overbought condition 
that takes place after this point in time is pretty much a slam dunk back to 92 and a quarter. Now there is one caveat to that, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but that's what the premium is telling us. So market moves up, and we're right in here at 94 and a quarter, where we find ourselves in an overbought condition. Now we go back to the premium, look at the threshold, and look for a divergence. And right in here we find you know, we are just dropping below the threshold line, another little tick up. Good time to take a short trade right in here. You could have taken it in here as well, but you wait for that moment for it to equal the previous high and then hit the button. That's when you want to execute this trade. That's where you're going to get your best fill. All right, so market drops. So you get a fill at around 94 and a half, drops to 93 and three quarters, and it hasn't dropped down to that 92 and a quarter. So we're just going to hold this. And we move up again, right back to where we were before. Okay, now don't get concerned. Don't think, oh, I'm going to get stopped out. Look at your indicators. Okay, just look at look at the the ES itself. All right. See the histogram where it is here versus where it is here. Okay, you got nothing there. This is this is a bunch of air. You don't need to worry about that. It's coming down. Furthermore, the slope has once again changed negatively. There's only one area of caution here. One area of caution. This is the premium, this is the ticky. Look at the amplitude of this indicator. Here compared to here. We're at a much higher high. On the We're at equal highs here, but a much higher high And we oftentimes will see that happen as an indication that the market is liable to come back to that price. We'd like to see it, see some divergence there. That doesn't always have to happen that way. But that's the way we might choose to read that. So you've got next, next to nothing to worry about just on the, on, on the uh, histogram here compared to here. There's a big divergence there. So, but this is a little bit of a heads up. Keep in mind, premium is a leading indicator. Pay attention to it. It doesn't lie. Let's move on. Okay, now we get a lower high here again. We're in an overbought condition. So if we hadn't traded here, we'd like to maybe take a trade somewhere in here. And all we have to do is have an equal high or higher high on the sprues. Principle number two, lower high on the premium, lower high on the ticky, and when the premium is at a lower high, we should be below the threshold level, which is up here. And that's what you see happen. And down the market goes. Now, we get a new low on the premium at 929.45. And guess what? We now have a caveat. We have a caveat. The caveat, as we teach in our class, is this. If you get a new low on the premium, and it's a naked bar, as we call it, expect that the market will return to that price or go lower, unless you get a new low on the premium at a higher price on the spoons. 
the forecast based on the premium on this bar is overwritten by the forecast on this bar. All you can say now, we should drop below 93 and a quarter, but we can't be sure that it's going to drop below 92 and a quarter. And what you see happen right in here is all she wrote. The market profile has dropped. Your lower value area represented by this green line is now beginning to go up. And it moves up and the spoos moves right down to 92 and 3 quarters. Your premium is now above the lower threshold level. You've got higher lows on the premium, higher lows on the ticking, and you're in an oversold condition as represented here. You might want to get out of your short trade and start thinking about going long. Because remember, we've already hit that 92 and a quarter low volume area on the composite threshold. And now that that's happened, we need to verify what is taking place on the Dow. So right in here, when we hit 92, uh, 92.25, right even then, we're looking at what's happening on the Dow. So let's take a look at that chart. Let's uh, set up our global indicator right to about here and look at the Dow. Now we run these two charts side by side, side by side, but so that you have a better opportunity to see exactly where we're at. You'll notice here that we are in an overbought condition, uh, pardon me, oversold condition. These three indicators are all sitting on various Dow charts. They're all different but they're all confirming we're, we're oversold. And this indicator here at the bottom is now also on the Dow and it's charting a growing volume. Um, this is not a volume indicator, I shouldn't have said that. This is a calculation of the price action of the Dow using a specialized form of an RSI. Now that having been said, the question that we are trying to address is where is the price of the Dow? And the price, oh look, the Dow is down at 17.039. Where was our composite? Where was that little threshold? Right there. Okay. You see it right here. We've gone past the point of control and down to the first area of potential support. And we don't know that for sure. But that's where we're at. And you can see it right on this composite chart. So it's not, it's not surprising that we might feel some support here for the simple reason <laughs> that the, the spoos are down at that low volume area. And the Dow doesn't seem to want to drop much lower than this because if it goes much below 35, it's going to have a quick drop down below that area. So here's our first area right there around 39. That's exactly where we're at right now. Let's move this back to the present day. Okay. So we see some support growing in here. And 
and we see it tag that same price here, then we drop into a slightly lower price right in here. All the way down to 35, almost to 17 or 35, right in there. So could it go lower? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But look at what's happening to your profiles. Your profile lines, as the market has moved up now, the lower value area, as represented by the green line here, is now below your price. And the point of control, the, the yellow line, is right in here. So yeah, we might see the market drop down to this point of control or even as far as the lower value area, sometimes even more than that. But what you don't see is the growing divergence in here. And there was a growing divergence. Let's see if we can show you this. Let's just pause this for a moment. Okay, so here we are back at our chart, and the Dow has dropped down here to that area of 38. And look at the indicator here. This particular indicator we follow very, very closely as it helps us to understand where there is divergence. It drops way down below the oversold area. And when she drops into the lowest price here, look at this divergence. This is what we're referring to. Look at these lows. Much higher low here. Lower low here. Granted, we're oversold, but there's a big divergence. This market is going back up. And up she goes. And that's how you know. Now let's go back to where we were at before. Just pause. All right. So we're once again we're comparing this price associated with this bar on the premium. At that moment, we're expecting the market to drop back to or exceed 92 and a quarter. But we have a caveat here. At that particular moment, when we hit this new low on the premium, we cannot maintain that the market will go much lower. Only lower than it was than the price was at the time this occurred, which at that point is at 93 and a quarter, and it drops another couple of ticks. At which point in time, the premium is now all right, divergent. It's above the threshold line. And the Dow is down at its lowest point. And from our previous charts, we can see that it was also divergent. The indicator showed a big divergence here. The trend has shifted. So now we're going to start looking for oversold conditions to buy. We're no longer selling, we're buying. 
And if we're not buying right here, the next opportunity to buy, based upon where the oversold condition is on the ES, let's just move forward. You've got an oversold condition right in here. Okay. Very briefly, she hits zero. At that particular moment, you were also hitting zero on the Dow. Beautiful. Confirmation on the Dow, as well as on the ES. Good time to go long. So what do we want to do? There's your setup. Now what we need to do is confirm this on the premium and the ticky. The premium the lows of the premium, not the highs, but the lows now. The lows need to be higher lows and a lower or equal low on the spoos and above, the lows need to be above the threshold level. And they are. Right in here. And we have higher lows on the ticky. We are not trying to super analyze this. It doesn't take that much. You need to see divergence once, uh, see the divergence on the premium and the ticky once the setup has been confirmed. Okay, so you're going long right in here. In fact, if you waited for this to hit zero, which actually it doesn't until right now, so you're off of that low slightly. You could have used the Dow to confirm that you were at a low. Because look at where the indicators are right in there. They're hitting zero. S&P doesn't hit zero until just a tick or so later. But you can also use the Dow for the same purpose. And we'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But there's your low. Okay, and there's your divergence. It's right there. Go long. It's going to make money. And it does. Now, as it does, we're now moving up. We've got higher lows on the spoos, higher highs on the spoos from that previous low. And we're moving into this uh, area of point of control and the lower, or, or pardon me, the upper value area. The upper value area has been declining until this point, and it's now soon going to be increasing again. So right in here, there's liable to be a little bit of resistance. In either case, we're still long. So the next area, next opportunity to go long during this rally is right here. Again, we hit zero. And we're hitting zero on two of the three indicators on the Dow. Furthermore, the Dow has moved right into the point of control, which at this point in time is now stepping up. The point of control is now increasing instead of decreasing, which it was down here. It's now moving up. There's your support. It's right in here on the Dow and right here on the Spoos. She moves up. Okay, where's your next opportunity? Next opportunity for a long trade right in here. You hit zero. Confirm it on the Dow, see if it's also at zero. It is. But it's only zero on one. Now, if you're looking at this closely, okay, we're right in here on the spoons. The Dow is decreased, it is declining a little bit here. And the point of control is the yellow line. So a lot of our traders will say, you know, we're so close. Chances are it's going to drop right into that point of control. And once it does, okay, once it does, we can then once again read our premium and ticky and see where we're at and see if there's a reason to take a long trade here. And this, 
this would have been even a, a better time to execute because you actually have a, a bit more confirmation for what it's worth. You've got the Dow going into the point of control right there, and the spoos, okay, right in there. Look at the premium. The lows of the premium are now above fair value, friends, when that is happening. When your lows on the premium are at or above fair value, you are buying. You're buying the daylights out of that. I'm going strong into the, this next little move. I mean, it was true over here. See where we were above? Two point, uh, negative 2.2, .2, all through this rally, except for that little drop here. And that's not a significant drop, by the way, because you're still way above your threshold area. And then your next bars are way above fair value. Ooh, it, go long. Confirmed on the Dow, confirmed on the spoos. All right, next point in time doesn't occur till much, much later. This doesn't quite hit zero. It's not quite at zero. So what do you do if that happens? Then go back to the Dow. See what the Dow is doing. See if the Dow is telling you we're oversold. And look at our global vertical line here. You're oversold on the Dow right in here. You're oversold again right in here. Oversold. Oversold. Oversold in here. Okay. Oversold there oversold there. Again, all you need is one of these. If you've got more than that, all the better. But there's a dip right in there. See where it lines up on the spoos? You're buying that dip. All right. Where are you at, by the way? At this point in time, oh, look, you're at 99. Hmm. Was that a random walk? No, you knew that at 8.42, at 8.42, you already expected the Dow to be going back to 99, and it hits that. Actually, it hit it first right in here at 10.15. 8.42. Nine forty-two, ten fifteen. Almost an hour and a half later, the spoos go back to where the premium said it would. Give you a nice heads up earlier on during the day. Premium doesn't lie. Okay, so we rally quite nicely up to oh look, two thousand one, and we run into a little bit of resistance. Now, where is the Dow at this point? The Dow is up here at 17.099. Where did we say we were liable to hit some resistance? Let's go back to the composite. And look at the shelves if you want to look at it that way. You got your first little shelf right in here at 17081. Then right in here at 17095. The next shelf will be at 11 uh, 17 109. So 
we were at 17099, which is right here. That's not that's not to be viewed as your most likely place where the market is going to find resistance. There's not it hasn't spent enough time there. So we're not looking to short that. We're still long. I wouldn't even think about shorting it until it gets up to about 11.10. So let's go back. But as you rally up here, you're above the 2000 level that we had talked about previously. The Dow is hitting a new high, but it's not quite where it needs to be yet for you to even worry. So we're still long. That's what we're trying to say. So the next opportunity to take a buy doesn't happen until we're down here. Now we come back, and as you can see, we're oversold. Oversold. This is hit zero. It's oversold on the Dow. Three different indicators say it's oversold. Look the buy end of this round. Verify it on the premium, and sure enough, premium has not gone much below the fair value area, and the next low is even above fair value on this one tick bar at 2,000. There you have it go long. It takes just a few minutes for it to really begin to rally. But in any case, that's what it does. Now as we move back up to 2001, we take a real close look at where we're at, where we are at on the Dow. So let's bring the Dow to center stage. The Dow, at this moment in time, right, is at 17,100, and we said 17,10. That's where that shelf was. Go back and look. See for yourself. 17,10. So if we hit 17,10, we're going to be paying a little closer attention. And guess what? It only gets up to 1703, and it says that's enough. Now, why not 1710? Nothing's perfect. But what you also see happening here is significant. Look at your indicator right down here. This compared to this. Okay, we're down here, folks. Right down here. You have a divergence. Okay. Got a divergence there. Lower high. You gotta pay attention to that. Now, I'm going to show you this other screen that we watch, which we can easily replicate and put onto the screens that are before you. In fact, later on in the presentation, you're going to see us do that. But I just want to, to keep your focus on some simple things before we get into the more complex areas. But let's, let's pull back this chart that we were looking at before. So here we're at 1703. Now, what's significant about this is that we're trying to move up into the upper value area. And this moving profile, the profile here is telling us that we're going to hit resistance right in this area. 
And then furthermore, you see this huge divergence again. Look at this, here compared to here. This is our primary indicator for charting divergence. And you are divergent. So is it any wonder that we drop the drop we do? So now it's going to be really precarious when it comes to taking a long trade. We're still in a long trend. Don't get me wrong. We're still long. But now you've got to be very careful about where you take a long trade. Because at least for the moment, this market is moving down. And you see where it finally drops to. It drops right into the low value area. Right into the low value area. Before it begins the rally back up. That's why the profile is so, so useful. So this ha happens uh, about 11 o'clock central time. So as the market was dropping and you saw where it was at, you were oversold on all of these occasions. Let's just take a look at where the Dow, uh, or pardon me, where the ES is. As we're moving closer into the low value area here. So we're going to check this from about 12.30 on into 2 o'clock. Here we are into 12.30, and we've been oversold in all this time. But look at where you're at in relationship to the low value area on the Dow, as well as on the ES. Okay. Okay. Here's the Dow. There's the low value area. Here's the spoos. Here's the low value area. You're not even close. So going long in here might not give you much. And sure enough, it could be profitable 98 into uh, ekes out one point here. And then just look at what's happening on the Dow here. You're overbought. We've got a decrease in the slope on our special indicator. <laughs> We're coming back down. And you move right up into the highs, move up to the point of control, and bounce off of it like it was a brick wall. And now you flutter around where the highs are below the point of control and you finally get to a situation where you're oversold once again right in here. All right, That's where you're at on the Dow as well. You might, might be able to pull out some measure of a good trade in here, but there isn't much. 98, 99, there's a point there, and you're over, you're over bought once again on the Dow. And it doesn't go up much more than that into 99 and a quarter. All right, you're oversold. Excuse me, you're overbought right here. And is there any indication here that this is going to come back down? Is there really any indication? Do you see it on the premium? All right, let's answer that question. Now, we, we may or we may not. 
but we should at least look. Is there any indication that this is coming back down? Here's how we do this. All right. Starting from here at 1107, we saw the, a big drop on the premium. This is generally an indication that this is a, an area of support because it didn't go below the threshold. In fact, it came right down to it. Wow, is that is that cool or what? Let's just measure that. Negative 247, our threshold is at negative 248. These numbers work. We go down a little bit lower and we've got a divergence there. So we're going to now look at the, we're going to refresh our premium uh, indicator right after we hit that new low. So 11.45. We go in here to 11.45 and we start dragging new lows. So what we're looking for is for the for the spoos to drop lower in association with the premium and at the lowest point of the premium, or pardon me, the lowest point of the spoos, we should see a higher low on the premium if we're going to look to go long. So we drop into this low. Now we drop into a lower low on the premium, but a higher low on the spoos. All right. We should drop lower, but once we do, right there, we're right at fair value. So right in here at 1230, you see the spoos are beginning to rally again off of 1997 and three quarters. Now you get another new low at 1997 and three quarters here, followed by the next few bars are way above fair value. We're at another area of being oversold right in here. In fact, we could confirm that on the Dow. I think we already did. But you can see it very easily on the premium here. So we're going back up now. And you can see that on the Dow as well. We don't really finally hit that low that we're looking for until the spoos drop into the low value area. And that happens right there. That only takes one tick. And it happens right after 2 o'clock. The spoos have now moved down into an increasing lower value area. The low value area has been stepping up all along. And finally, it smacks right into it. And that's as low as she goes. And up it goes. You've got no lower lows on the premium either. So you could have looked for taking a long trade in here. We're over sold. You see that? And now we're oversold over here. And we've introduced at this point in time one of our other threshold indicators we've added to this scheme right in here so you can see this a little bit more clearly. We use this for the purpose of registering divergence. This indicator right here turns green right in here. And at this point, where we're at a slightly lower low, okay, one tick lower. Look at where the indicator is here. There's your divergence. Here we were at negative 152. Here, we're at negative 89. 
it's a higher low, there's your divergence, and that's all she wrote. You want to go long. And where are you expecting this to stop? Right up at 2000 again, or a little bit beyond that. The high of the day was at 2001 thus far. We should get a higher high yet this afternoon. low right in here take the trade is it confirmed on the Dow absolutely right we're slightly after two o'clock so that's right Where's our screen there we are all right this is the same spot okay same spot We've dropped right into that low value area and we are over sold right in here at 14.10. And you confirm that these indicators are all oversold and we've introduced our the other indicators that we regularly use to verify oversold conditions as well as divergence and we're, over, we're definitely oversold here. Here we've got increasing, um, the histogram is increasing at this point so it's right in there is where we're going to go along. It's been confirmed both on the Dow as well as on the VS. Perfect time to go along. Your next opportunity to go along on the Dow we can go along here we can go along in here. Okay. Real clear opportunity for a long trade. And that shows up nicely here. Keep in mind, we run these side by side. You don't see an oversold condition on our indicators here. But you see it on the Dow, and that's why we run this side by side. This is the way we do it. Okay? Side by side. So you can see what's happening. And up she goes. Let's take it all the way to the top. We hit 101.75. It is now almost to the close. Well, it's right at the close. Okay, we're right at the close here. We hit a new high for the day. That's all she wrote. And that's how we do it. Now, we spend a long time analyzing the, 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 the approach that we use. We do this the same way all the time. Same way. We can teach you how to do it. We can give you the indicators. We can set it up the right way. It's not just to have the indicators. You've got to know how to read them. You've got to know. You've got to have these indicators placed on the right increments in order to get this level of precision. That's why you hire us. <laughs> okay. But before we're done, I want you to go back. Let me take you back to the future. Oh, there's a movie like that. Back to the future. All right, what do we mean? Friends, we've rallied into new highs over the course of the summer. Could we go much higher? Eh, we could. But I wouldn't be worrying so much about how much higher we're going to go. The concern is how much lower we're going to go, and lower we are going to go. That is going back to the future. Here's your future. At the tail end of May, the market gapped from 1891, they say 1892 for, say, simple figuring and it gapped up to 1896. 
there has been no volume in that little gap area. That gap, friends, is going to be filled. You can be absolutely, positively certain that this gap is going to get filled. I can't tell you when. I can just tell you that it will. And knowing that, I'd be very careful about holding a long position for very long. Because if we go much higher, the market will eventually say, we got to go lower. We got to fill this gap. And we'll, it is a certainty that this is going to happen. Or I'll eat my hmm, I'll eat my spoons for breakfast. <laughs> okay, you see my point here. This is this is this would be my concern. My concern is that gap is going to get filled, and that's really, really a significant drop because we're we're talking a hundred points on the S and P just to fill that. Okay. Now, did that occur? As this market continued to rally up, did it say, hey, we've got to come back and try to fill that? It most certainly did. But it didn't quite get that far. It only got to just below 1800. This little gap, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's going to happen, friends. As the market drops, you're going to see it find support right in here, and then it will continue to drop until it comes right down to the point of control. It'll go just a little bit beyond that and find some support. It'll drop down to the area of 1955. It'll find some report, some support right after that, maybe right in there at 51. It'll drop below 44. It'll drop below 41. It'll drop below 38. It'll flounder and come right back down to the low value area. And once it drops below that, it's going to drop all the way. That's what we forecast. 100 points on the S&P, 1,000 points on the Dow. To where this gap currently exists. Oh, but friends, don't think it's going to stop there. Let's take a look at the real big picture. The real picture here, which takes us back to before the first of the calendar year of 2014, your point of control has not changed. It's still down to 1857. The market will come back and test that. 1857 is a very significant number. If you take this back to October, okay, October of 2013, that point of control has not moved. So that kind of a drop should be anticipated. And if it drops much below that, where is it going to? How about right down here to just below 1800? See how low that volume area is? We have very, very little volume down here. 
that's practically a gap, just as, as this is a gap in here. This isn't a gap, but it's such a low volume area. You can expect that the market is going to have to fill some of that with activity, and it will try to do so. Oh, but look at that. See why we're concerned? 17, 17. And if it drops below 17, 17, again, over the last several months, not much volume at all. So let's take the picture back even further. Now you see what we're talking about. Look at the volume. This is a composite from August. We're in August of 2013, a year ago, friends. We've climbed, but we've left a footprint that is going to be filled. There's your, there's your gap, 1709. There's another gap. Back to the future, friends. <laughs> if you're holding a trade for much longer, you better be careful. You better be careful. Because down this is coming. You see it on the ES, and guess what? You also see it on the Dow. Now this is just, this is a profile from July. Let's look at the big, big picture. Let's take this back three years. This profile is from 2010, November of 2010. Where's your point of control? Where's the point of control? Let's move this chart up so we can see this a little better. Okay. Your point of control, friends, on the Dow is at 12,000 right here. Come on, the chart to cooperate. Cooperate with me, please. 12,094. That's your point of control. And we're up at 17. That's a pretty big drop. 5,000 points. I'd be concerned if I were you. So what's going to happen? Back to the future, we will go. And when we do, you can expect the market is going to take a little bit of a breather at a variety of different spots. Now, we've already been as low as this most recent high volume area, which was right above that number, 16,412. It's just, just a little bit above that. But we've got low volume areas here. 
and you, anytime we see one of these low volume areas, yeah, the market's going to gravitate to fill that. It's going to come all the way down to this upper value area just below 15,000. And once it breaks through that, which is 2,000 points below where we are right now, it will see the need to fill these other areas of very low volume. All right, down here toward 14,000. It's another thousand points below. Right in here. And especially right in there. 13, 7, 10. Before it starts to move even lower into the point of control. Back to the future, friends. <laughs> Are you concerned as much as I am? The figures don't lie. The graphs. The graphs are telling us that there is a great, great need for caution here. Now, believe what you wish. But these, these profile areas serve a very useful purpose. And we're going to be watching to short this market over the next three months. I think our best trades are going to be short for the reasons that we've just demonstrated. So on that note, we will end this video. We're going into our Labor Day holiday now, so take a little bit of a breather because it's going to get busy. When you come back to trading in September, you know September, October tends to be some of the most volatile times of the year when a great deal of short trading takes place and I would not be surprised whatsoever that we see it happen in a very big way this year. That's our analysis. You've seen how we do it every day and we now take a look at the big picture and you'll know pretty much where we expect the market to be going over the next three months. We're pretty well going to wipe out as far as I can tell, we're going to wipe out almost all of the profits that were taken up until now. That's all going to go away, as far as we can tell. And this is Rod Kusinen, Spoo Man, for Risk. <laughs>